I made a shiny new crosscut sled. Why does anyone need a crosscut sled? And how is it made? All that and more, coming up. Most table saws come with a miter gauge, but it's not very well suited to the job it's designed for. Being as small as they are, they don't do well for larger pieces of lumber. Holding a piece tight to the miter gauge and pressing it down to the table can make it difficult to slide the workpiece accurately through the blade. I do have a miter saw and it does a great job cross-cutting lumber, and I'll continue to use it for really long pieces. But the miter saw is not as convenient as the cross-cut sled. If you have a small piece that needs to be cut, the miter saw can be dangerous for this. You don't want your hands that close to the blade, and there's no easy way to clamp the workpiece to the miter saw. Also, in this area here, there's nothing to support the piece, so the saw blade will want to push it back and pull it out of your hands. This open area can also cause a lot of tear out. Since the wood fibers are not supported by anything, the saw rips them out rather than cutting them. My miter saw is also only capable of cutting stock with a width of 14 inches or less. You can work around this a little by flipping the piece over to finish the cut, but that's not very accurate and still has its limits. Repeatability is also somewhat limited on the miter saw. You can for sure set up a stop block on the miter saw, but it gets more difficult to clamp down a stop block as you get closer to the blade, so small repeatable cuts can be more challenging. The crosscut sled is a major improvement on all of these issues with the miter saw. So let's get to building it. What you see here is more or less all that I'll need for the project. The plywood is what's left over from the French cleat ball. It's a 5 8 inch piece of birch and I have some T-Track and a hold down clamp. I've also ordered a stop block to add to the fence later. It just so happens that this piece is already the right length for my liking, so I just need to cut it to width. I'm going to go with 30 inches wide just because it's a nice round number. I'll also have to make some runners to fit in the tracks on the table saw, so I found a piece of scrap from the new lumber cart and then cut a couple of strips to use as runners. Now, I'm going to need to cut a couple of dados for the T-tracks, so I'll have to swap out the blade for the dado stack. And whoever said I don't learn from my mistakes. This time, I test the dado setup on a bit of scrap wood to make sure it's a good fit for the T-tracks. Back when I made the drill docking and charging station, I didn't bother with this test and ended up with an extra wide dado. The T-track fits great in the test piece, so now it's time to cut a couple of channels into the base of the sled. I'm now ready to attach the runners to the base. I put some washers in the table saw miter tracks so that my runners will sit just above the tabletop. Then I made sure the fence is locked in place. For this part, I see a lot of people using CA glue because it sets up so fast, but I don't have any. So I'm just going to use wood glue and then add some weight on top of it, and then I'll leave it for a while to let the glue dry. I returned about an hour later and carefully lifted the sled up and flipped it over so I can attach the runners more securely with some countersunk screws. Okay, let's flip that over and see how well it slides. Not too bad. It'll slide better later when I add some paste wax to it. Now that the runners are attached, I can add the T-tracks. These are made from aluminum, so you can cut them with woodworking tools. Once cut, I attach them with some screws. When I was building this shop, I had to move everything in this place multiple times. And during that time, I managed to find a few things that I'd forgotten about. One of the things I found was this two-pack of saw blades. Well, I think now is the time to open them up and change out the old dull blade. And I'll use the nice new blade to cut the pieces for the front and back fences. The back fence, the one that your workpiece will sit against, is going to be three pieces of plywood glued together. 
but I want to sand it a bit first. Even the brand new blade left some burn marks. After both those sides are sanded, it's time for some glue. But since this plywood is really smooth, first I'm going to rough up the surface a bit. Now time to add a lot of glue. Then clamp it all together. Oh, wait a minute. I just bought a roll of masking paper so I wouldn't get glue all over my workbench. There, that's better. While that's drying, I'm going to round the edges on the front fence. For that, I use one of the shims from the dado set. Then, I cut it on the scroll saw. And cleaned it up with the belt sander. The front fence doesn't really need to be too precise, so I just clamp it on, flip it over, and attach it with some countersunk screws. That's done, but the glue on the back fence won't be dry yet, so I'll have to wait a while for that to dry. I wanted to make sure the glue is good and dry, because I made the fence a little oversized so that I could trim it down after, to make sure that everything was nice and square. The top of the back fence will have a T-track in it as well, so now that I have the fence to its final length, I measured and cut the T-track to fit. Of course, I'll need to cut a dado in the back fence, so I have to put the dado stack back in the table saw. Then test to make sure it's a good fit for the T-Track. Everything measures up, so now I can cut the groove in the fence. And then attach the T-Track. Next is a small step, but you don't want to overlook it. I'm going to add a chamfer to the bottom of the back fence. This will face into the sled and will provide an area for sawdust to go into. That way, when you slide your piece of lumber up against the fence, the sawdust won't be in the way and possibly prevent the workpiece from getting flush with the fence. It's time to attach the fence. This is the most important part of the project. If the fence is not square to the blade, then all your cuts will be off. There's a fairly commonly known technique for this called the five cut method. To start though, I'll use a framing square to get the fence as close to square as I possibly can. And then add a countersunk screw to each end of the fence. To help this slide a little bit better on the table saw, I gave the bottom of the sled a quick sanding. Now the moment you've all been waiting for, it's time to make the first cut into the sled. That was very satisfying. And since I'm thinking about it, I'm going to add a little block to the spot where the blade would pop out the back of the fence. It's just a little safety feature to help remind me to never put anything there that I don't want to be cut off. It's time for the five cut method. The basics of it is that you take a scrap of wood, cut it once, then rotate it so your freshly cut side is against your fence. Then do that three more times until you're back where you started. Then you'll cut off about an inch or so. You can now take that piece and measure each end to determine if your fence is square or not. There is some math involved and since I'm no math teacher I won't try to explain it. But I will add a link in the description for a calculator that'll help with that if you need it. My first attempt was off by quite a bit. So I pulled the screw out of one side of the fence, made my adjustment, and drilled a new hole to reattach the fence to the base. Then, did the five cuts again. This time my measurement was right on, or at least close enough for me. The base is still not sliding as well as I'd like though, so I'm going to add some paste wax to it. Now let's see if that slides any better. It makes a huge difference. The sled slides beautifully. There's just one more thing that I want to do. I'm going to add a little bit of red paint, just as a reminder of the danger of putting your fingers where they should not be. 
Everything's done now. And here's the difference between a miter saw cut and a crosscut sled cut. The sled produces a much cleaner cut. They're both nice and square, but the sled does such a good job of making a clean cut. I do have one more thing to add to the sled, and that's a stop lock. I did a fair bit of research to figure out what would be best for me, and in the end, I settled on the stop lock from Jonathan Katz Moses. For those who don't know, he's another YouTuber who has designed a number of products for woodworkers. I really like the design of his stop lock, so I've ordered one and I'm just waiting for it to arrive. Once it's here, I'll test it out and let you know what I think of it. If you're interested, I'll leave a link to Jonathan's channel in the description. The crosscut sled is going to be a great addition to my new shop. Another great addition to my shop are the tool holders on the French cleat ball. Click here to see how I created several tool holders out of scrap from around the shop. 